And speaking of going home, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm off now, but Peter Mitchell will be with you and he'll have all of the highlights and all of the live action coming up at the equestrian after this. Barcelona! day marred by cheating and disqualifications. Moroccan runner Khalid Scar is in disgrace after officials ruled that he'd been helped to victory by his 10,000 metre teammate. This report from Strathgordon. Morocco's Khalid Scar and Kenya's Richard Chalimo had left the field in their wake. Each took his turn to surge to the front. With three laps remaining, the race was set for an incredible climax. And there was one. A second Moroccan, Hamou Bataeb, was lapped by the pair. Chalimo sensed something was amiss. Rather than drop back, Bataeb stayed with the leaders, then blatantly assisted Scar in an illegal exhibition of team running. Very dangerous ground that Scar's on now. Scar had ample opportunity to dismiss Bataeb, but didn't. With a lap remaining, a track official did. But the intervention had come too late. The leading pair surged to the line in what should have been one of the great Olympic contests. Scar's going to win the goal for Morocco. Chalimo second. And Abibi will get third. And the crowd very disappointed. They're not happy at all. Soon after, Scar was stripped of his win. The rule's quite clear that a lapped runner may not assist a teammate. The Moroccans have lodged an appeal to be heard later tonight. Scar wasn't the only disqualification. In the women's 10k walk, the world champion, Aklina Ivanova, was outed after staging a stunning comeback, but officials ruled she hadn't been in constant contact with the ground. The race was awarded to China's Chen Yuling. Australia's Kerry Juna Saxby wilted in the heat, finishing 15th. Like Strathgordon, Seven Nightly News. But there was better to come for the Australians with two more bronze medals in the Tornado Catamarans and in the Discus to Daniela Costian, who defected from Romania four years ago. For the 27-year-old Brisbane-based athlete, this is what she had waited so long for. Her first throw at her first Olympic Games for her adopted country. Starting at 64.40 metres, Costian was always in contention, hovering around the top three. So that's a good throw to start proceedings. Giant Cuban Maritza Martin dismissed the challenge of Bulgaria's Kristova to win gold with a 70-metre hurl. Kostian's fifth throw won the bronze. Get the balance pretty well. And that's the best throw. 66.24 metres realised the dream for Kostian, who has perhaps sacrificed more than any other athlete for Olympic glory. They um, worked so good with me. Now I show them that I can do something for Australia. I'm so proud. And another bronze medal to Australia when, for the first time in this series, decent winds blew for our sailors. Mitch Booth and John Forbes, twice Tornado Catamaran World Champions, finished just 10 seconds short of the Olympic gold. The pair overcame earlier setbacks to be a few puffs of wind away from victory. Just so close. It was just a few boat lengths, the two guys crossed in front of us, and that was the difference. There's only three, three or four points between gold and bronze. The celebrations began immediately dockside, with our yachties proving that in a rare Barcelona breeze, they can be world beaters. And the medal count means that we're now assured of at least equaling our second best medal tally of 24 in Los Angeles. And later in the bulletin, Drew Morford to bring us up to date on Olympic activity. Very close to the medals. Australia's Olympic performance of the day. And this one has a very good throw. Out past 65 in medal contention now for 66 2 4. So that means Costian wins the bronze medal. Congratulations, Daniela Costian. That impressive performance was brought to you by another competitive Australian. <laughs> Telecom Mobile Net. Australia's own. Best overall performance. But as John Brady reports, Nicole Provis and Rachel McQuillan have unofficially equaled our LA total by assuring themselves of at least bronze in the tennis competition. Provis and McQuillan at the bottom of screen beat Stranadova and Novotna of Czechoslovakia to reach the semi-finals, where at the Olympics both losing teams will receive bronze. Australia's men's hockey side also looks on target for a medal after beating sole gold medalist Great Britain overnight. 
the first goal coming after just two minutes. Showing no sign of the injury problems which have plagued the team in these games, the Kookaburras led 2-0 at the break. In the second, they were intent on avenging the semi-final loss. Britain served them at Seoul, sending home another four goals. The team, which has promised so much in past games, now looks set to deliver the goods after a 6-0 win. Oh, Rollins has let it go through his legs. Well, Jay Stacey, I said there was still some interest in the game. Seven One Australian who came looking for gold was Archer Simon Fairweather. The 22-year-old reached the 32-man elimination round, but lost to Irwin Vertigen of the Netherlands, 107-98. Fellow Australian Grant Greenham went to the round of 16 but lost 102 to 94 to Vladin Chikarev of the unified team. The Golden Arrow was flighted by Sebastian Flute of France. In kayaking, Australia's Daniel Collins and Lawrence Trim in the middle of screen earned a place in the 500 metre semi finals with second in the repper charge. On the track, Renee Poechka and Michelle Locke were eliminated along with Dean Capabianco in the 200. But Melinda Gainsford in lane six reached the 200 metre women's semi finals. I'd say, um, I really wanted to get into that today. You know, it's great running here and it's an experience. Bad luck for America's Mike Conley in the triple jump. He made 18.17 metres to win gold. Had the win factor been two or less, he'd have set a world record. The wind was 2.1. And from lane five in the 400, one of the Olympics tragedies. Britain's Derek Redmond tore a hamstring and courageously tried to complete the race to a standing ovation before the agony became too much. Tears were coming from his eyes. It's an absolute agony. He can't go on any longer. The emotion of this... John Brady, The Seven Nightly News. This is National Mine News with Brian Naylor. In Barcelona with two athletes stripped of gold medals. Moroccan Khalid Scar was disqualified from the 10,000 metres for using a teammate to block another competitor, while the unified team's Alina Ivanova was accused of running during the 10 kilometre walk. No such shame, though, for Australia, with two more bronze medals added to our tally. Tim Sheridan reports. Costian felt there was a debt to Australia for offering her a new life, and there was only one repayment plan she knew of. And this one is a very good throw. 66.24 metres hoisted the former Romanian champion up into the medals. After giant Cuban Maritza Martin Garcia broke 70 metres for gold, Daniela became a bronze Aussie. I wanted to show to Australia that I am good. So because they, they um, work so good with me, so I showed them that I can do something for Australia. I'm so proud. Australia's Kerry Juna Saxby started strongly over the 10 kilometres wall. And she's in a great position at the moment. But she lost touch when 31 degree heat spread the field over the finishing climb to the stadium. The Unifieds even over made a mighty charge to the finish, but incurred a third and tragic warning for running. She was stripped of the gold and it went to Chan. Juna Saxby was 15. I ran out there, felt good. The going got tough, I was going with the pace. Once the hill came, so I can't explain it. Another sensation in the arena was in the 10,000 metres. Scar leads and picks it up. But Kenya's Richard Chalimo suddenly found himself fighting two Moroccans when the leading pair lapped Olympic champion Hamu Boutaib, who illegally re-involved himself in the race. Very dangerous ground that Scar's on now. Officials did more than Scar to get rid of the second Moroccan, and sadly a spectacular finish was met with derision. Scar's going to win the gold for Morocco! Scar celebrated, but gold turned to dust when the medal was stripped and given to Chalimo. In the women's 800, a former soccer player from the Netherlands put in a rails run for a massive foil over. The Dutch girl comes through Van Langen in a great time. In the 400 semi-finals, a personal best from Michelle Locke, but like Rene Poechka, a seventh not good enough to survive tough semi-finals. The 200 metres proved a hard luck story for Britain's Derek Redmond, with a near miss for Perth's Dean Capabianco. It's fast, 2021. The Australian missed the final 16 by three hundredths of a second. But with technicoloured nails again the vogue, into the semi-finals went Melinda Gainsford. With a fighting fourth, she exceeded all expectations. Great running here and it's an experience. I'm really pleased to make her top 16. The final day of sailing blew up a bronze for Australia in the Tornado class. Mitch Booth and John Forbes were just 10 seconds off the French winners after four hours on the water. And that was the difference. Yeah. There's only three, three or four points between gold and bronze. Yeah. But, uh, 
Fantastic. We're happy. Can I just congratulate you? <laughs> Good boy. From a champagne shower to a more murky kind of celebration for Australia's second sailing bronze. And a 6-0 bath for Great Britain from our men's hockey team. 3-0, Warren Birmingham. It was revenge over the Olympic champions for beating the Kookaburras out of bronze at Seoul. The Australians now in the semi-finals. Oh! Kim Sheridan, National Mine News. The crowd ensured it was a lap of shame. Well, they're booing and whistling and throwing things here at Scar. It wasn't the only disqualification. In the women's 10-kilometre walk, Ivanova of the unified team virtually ran past her opponents entering the stadium. She was stripped of her gold medal for lifting both feet. Australia's Kerry Juna Saxby was a medal favourite, but in her worst international performance, finished 15th after feeling sick. In form, 27-year-old Aussie Daniela Kostian, who defected from Romania before the Seoul Olympics. She won a bronze medal in the discus. I wanted to show to Australia that I am good. So, because they, they um, work so good with me, so I showed them that I can do something for Australia. I'm so proud. Kostian chose Australia because it was as far away as she could get from her former homeland. The wait for citizenship prevented her from representing Australia until last year's World Championships. But she was happy to wait in her new country. I make the same training like in Romania, but this is good, of course, better than Romania. <laughs> also proud yachtsmen Mitch Booth and John Forbes, who added another bronze to our tally. They are unlucky not to achieve greater glory. There's only three, three or four points between gold and bronze, yeah. but... Uh, Fantastic. We're happy. The Aussies celebrated in classic style on a day dominated by cheating. Yet British 400 metre runner Derek Redmond embodied the true spirit of the Games. He tore a hamstring but wanted to finish, his father helping him to get there. And the Commonwealth of Independent States still leads the medal tally with 32 gold. Australia is currently in eighth position with six gold, eight silver and nine bronze medals. Alan Besley will join us a little later with more highlights from Barcelona. Yes. The 16 hits of 92. Well, he's been hot tonight, and he celebrates in style. And more power to him. Mike Connolly takes the gold with a giant leap. 18-17, and that's a world record. But denied a place in history by wind assistance. Sports and Alan Besley, uh, what's been making news? Well, Rob, everyone's asking, what's happened to Brad Hardy? We'll find out tonight, and our Ollie Roos have emerged as the real surprise packet of the Olympics. <laughs> Australia's men's hockey team is just two wins away from its impossible dream. Last night, the Kookaburras thrashed the reigning Olympic champions, Great Britain. They now meet the Dutch in the semi-final and are perfectly placed to finally win that elusive gold. Australia gave Great Britain an absolute caning, winning six goals to nil. It dominated the game from start to finish to waltz into the semi-finals. Open shot. Crack. That, that goal. Goal. The Aussies have received a favourable draw, now playing the Netherlands. Gold medal favourites Germany take on Pakistan. Australia has a great chance of winning the gold. Good news for Victorian discus thrower Werner Rieterer. He's qualified in fifth position for the final after a best throw of 62.20 metres. Melinda Gainsford is through to the semi-finals of the women's 200 metres. She finished fourth in her second round heat. Her time, 23.03 seconds. But she faces the toughest assignment of her life, making the final. In tennis, our women's doubles pairing of Rachel McQuillan and Nicole Provis have also made it through to the semis and they are now guaranteed of at least a bronze medal. The Aussies defeated Czechoslovakia in the quarters in straight sets. And in the men's triple jump, the longest leap in history. American Mike Connolly jumped 18.17 metres to win the gold by a huge margin. And that's out there. That's a massive jump. And still in Barcelona, the soccer competition in the Olympic Games is traditionally won by a European nation. This week, there are two non-European teams playing in the last four of the soccer tournament the African nation of Ghana, and our own Australian side, described as the surprise packet of this tournament, but now shooting for gold. It's less than 24 hours after Australia's soccer team has advanced to the semi-finals by beating Sweden. The players are still stiff and sore. Coach Eddie Thompson says he's giving them a light workout. But there's a deadly seriousness and commitment with every ball that's struck, with every exercise that wrings out more sweat on this humid afternoon. 
Australia must beat Poland on Wednesday night here to be certain of a gold or silver medal. Yeah, they're definitely on the improve. They're definitely, if their fitness holds out, uh, we could shock everybody and go the whole way. The Australians started this Olympic tournament slowly, losing against Ghana, one of their semi-finals opponents, and then drawing with Mexico. At that stage, they were written off by most observers. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't have expected us to uh, reach the semi-finals or let alone the quarter-finals. So uh, I think uh, we're one lot of bunch of guys that can uh, prove a lot of people wrong. It would be a fantastic feat for us. I mean, really, if I, even they get this far, I'm really proud of the guys. They've done ever so well, but uh, now we're here, we want to win it for sure. And every one of these players knows that a gold medal will do wonders for soccer in Australia. It will also boost the personal fortunes of each player wearing the Australian colours. And as they leave the training ground in the hills outside Barcelona, the Australians meet their Polish opponents. No words are exchanged, only a few glances. They're cocky, says an Australian. Not for long, says another.